Well, would like to welcome you back to another Big Blue Recap. Before we get started, I wanted to uh, say that this show is dedicated to the memory of the late, great Tyrone Jones. And joining me from Winnipeg is the Kamesh. Hello, Kamesh. Hello, everybody. So how was that halftime commemoration of some of the couple of great bombers. One other one was Milt Stiegel. How was yeah, that? It was pretty touching. It would have been nice if the stands would have been full, but again, they did it at halftime. So already it was, you know, because the game meant nothing, there was no one there. But uh, there was even fewer people there because it was halftime. So I don't know. I think if they, I think they should have done it either at the beginning I don't think they should have done it at halftime. But anyways, it was nice to be there. Um, do, 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 maybe, maybe there were other reasons why people weren't there, but we discussed that midweek. Now, you know, I don't want to sound like a pessimist because, you know, it was, it was great dedication. It was a great moment. Bombers finished the season with a victory, and thank God they did the vic- they had that victory on, on, a, on a day like that. Got out of the basement, I believe. Um, you know, but their trend shows that they should, they should start the season 0-1. You've got the same crew coming back, unless we don't know what the quarterback situation is and maybe a couple other positions, but this team has not strung, um, two wins in a row all season. So I'm expecting an 0-1 start, the pessimist in me. Um, You're calling for a loss before they even have a game. I, I'm just saying that they they haven't strung two victories in a row, so they'll you know, at least we know by game two they hopefully should be one and one. You know, I I think I think a great improvement on this team is an eight and eight, which is which could possibly get them into the playoffs. You know, well, this year this year it would have right. So you know, eight and eight it isn't so bad. I still think it's media mediocrity. Um, I still think that you potentially, and this was brought up in the game, not that, that they're, they're all knowledgeable, but the, the consensus is if, if they start the season with a losing record by mid, by mid year, they probably should dump the GM because then it's just showing you're not, you're not improving. You're going nowhere. And, you know, they gotta, they gotta put people in the stands. Uh, that's just my philosophy. It, uh, it's just, people just are not, they're not energized. And unfortunately, a firing could have energized the, uh, the fan base. I have to, I disagree with you. I don't want to really rehash the, should they fire them or not. It seems to me that the, um, players are on board with having Tim Burke at the helm and, they're willing to hand hand uh, hand the reins over to, to Joe Mack for another year. The thing you have to the, the thing you have to remember is they're hiring an assistant to Joe Mack to groom him to replace Joe Mack. So, I mean, <laughs> I, I, Mack, I wish the person grooming him was somebody ha- half knowledgeable. But anyway, <laughs> but, I, have to say, I don't know how much grooming will do, but there's going to be an assistant to take him over, and that's the way to do it. Why start from scratch? You know, uh, well, let's, let's not rehash. Let's just let's just talk about the game. We we did we did we did our special report. We both gave our opinions, and that that can be found on our um, bomber page. Um, but I want to talk about this game because this game this game ended really well. This game this is a team that closed out the game. This is this is a team that um, didn't have a great first half. Was still trying to find find their legs, I believe, in the first half. And and they came and, and, and but unlike other games where they've come out really kinda weak in the in the first half and, and maybe fall, fallen behind so much that this wasn't the case in this game. They were they went at halftime being close. And then they just dominated the game in the in the second half. And on all facets of the game, um, I was really impressed um with how with what they did. Um and happy to see them come out with a victory. It was nice for them to come out with a victory in the last game of the year. Now, at least end on, on, a, on a positive note. No, you know what? They showed some character, some heart. Uh, Justin Gold showed that he has uh, some p- 
potential. I, I think Alex Brink might have played him his way off the team. I don't think he did anything to solidify a chance. And you know they can't bring back all three. They no. can't bring back Brink, Elliot, and Goals. It's going to be – I think he's going to be odd man out. But – uh, I'm just looking up his numbers here. 70 for 26, 173 yards, and an interception. Plus 58 yards of rushing. Yeah. You know, I, I still, even with what they have, that, that is the, the biggest question mark for the team is, is the quarterback position. Right. And I will say before I forget, I want to make this point. It was a battle of the backups. Adrian McPherson did not look any better in relief of Anthony Calvillo than, than uh, Mr. Uh, Brink did, although he did throw for about 20 more yards and rush for 102 yards. But, you know, again, it, these guys, don't they're not starters, and they're not going to work with the first team, and there's all sorts of reasons why they, they can't. Maybe shouldn't be starters, but the fact is you're right. The Bombers have to solve that quarterback question. The big thing is, first of all, we don't have an Anthony Cavillo. <laughs> so <laughs> the luxury for Montreal is that they go into the playoffs with the best quarterback in, in the CFL. Uh, and that's a luxury we don't have. And the luxury we don't have is that we we have, I believe, a by skill level, we have a, a CFL caliber quarterback in Burke. The problem is the guy can't make it through a game. And unfortunately, um, I'd l- I wish that, that this year is an anomaly. I wish this, that, that, you know, he's just had some bad luck and that we could trust that we could have a season worth of buck to see really what he's worth. I, I just don't know if the team's going to take that chance. Um, and, and it's a big chance. So the quarterback decision is, is definitely the big one for this team. I sure hope that they get it right. Uh, you know, as as the quarterback position goes, I believe the team will go. So that is, to me, the big thing. Now, And the other thing I wanted to address is, you know, coming off kind of in relief, like a relief pitcher. There's some quarterbacks that are good at it and others that just aren't, right? One of the, one of the great, great guys coming off the bench from Bombers was – the great Huffnagel. Remember him? I do. The two, two, one two punch, Tommy Clements, John Huffnagel. Right. Clements went down or something happened. You knew Huffnagel would come off the bench and he was great. But when you when he when he had the starting role for the team, he didn't do so well. But that's that's not the case with Buck Pierce. He starts well, he just can't finish. So we're Well for him he yeah, he he can't he can't finish and I I'm just saying it's hard to know with these guys because we've talked about it before, it's the reps that they get to be a starter. And one guy getting all the reps, not not a bunch of guys sharing it, right? Um, but let's say they when they name that starter, that starter's at least probably got three or four games of, of rep time each week as a starter, and that makes a heck of a difference. And then we can and then we can evaluate. Unfortunately, if they make a decision that's the wrong decision and they're four games into the season, then we're back where we are this year. So the, the biggest, the biggest job that both, um, Burke and Mac have this year is, is solving that issue. And it's not an easy one for either of them to do. I, I wouldn't want to be in their position. It's Look, a- and they're not, they're, they're not the only CFL team in turmoil with their quarterbacks. Look at Edmonton. Uh, look at Hamilton they go and get Henry Burris and where did that get them it got them the same record as the Bombers so but I guess that could be more pinned on their defense than anything but yeah you're right the, they got to solve that question uh, another thing we could probably talk about moving forward in the off season when we have a chance will be the fact the Bombers have 11 potential free agents and it could you could see that defense decimated if well, I, here's what I want to go again because it's you know they've had their moments and then they've had their times where we just like shook our heads, but but Mac went with a with a young movement, right? A youth movement. He did, yes. Right, and, and now the biggest thing because this is the thing, 
they, these guys that have an extra year, um, now they're veterans. Now they, let's hope they're veteran leaders. And I, and when you're young in your career, you don't automatically become a leader. It comes through experience. It comes through game time. It, it comes through making bonehead decisions. It comes from taking penalties and learning through that. So next year, they've had a whole year behind their belt. And now they're veterans. And let's see what type of leadership, because it's key. You know, I was, I was listening to the game, and they had, um, I'm trying to remember, I think it was Wild West on uh, on uh, CBC. Oh, as it happens, I saw him in the stands yesterday. He was taking pictures with guys. He looks like he can still play. He, the guy, that's what they were saying. Like, you know, put on a sweater and go out there. Yeah, he looks uh, like he'd step right in the lineup. And... This guy is a bomber through and through. And this guy almost had me in tears talking about the heyday of the defense, naming, uh, you know, Delbert Fowler and all the other defensive guys. And then I started remembering around that era, we had great offensive linemen and Chris Walby, and we had John Bonk, and then we had a great, great uh, go-to guy in Poplowski. And I, I'm just going through the teams that we had in the leadership, and we're not talking one leader, two leaders, three leaders, four leaders. We had probably three or four in every facet of the game with those with with those players, and while we might not have won every great cup, as we know we didn't, we knew we had a team that was going to the playoffs every year, had a shot every year, and and we don't have that in this club, and it's missing. And I'm hoping that they keep some of those leaders just to see how they develop. And this is the problem that that I think that the Bombers have is these are very very tough decisions that they have to make. And they're making great decisions, and nobody knows, really. The one thing I'll say about Mac coming back is he can throw a dartboard, and let's see how it lands, right? Throw a dart to a dartboard, and let's see how it lands. Because there's so many tough decisions that the guy has to make, and I'll give him that. And well, here's, here's the list I was going to get to on defense of the guys that are free agents. So you got Jason Vega, Brian Turner, Marcel Bowman, who I think had an outstanding year. Too bad he was hurt for the beginning. Jonathan Hefney and Johnny Sears. Um, potential free agent, well, Deion Beasley. Okay, so, you know, that's a lot of guys on that defense that were starters. And uh, if they can't re-sign a lot of them, who are they Who are they going to replace them with? Well, it's going to be rookies again. We're in trouble. I think they need to – well, this is what they need to evaluate. And I'm not the expert on this, right? You know, we all have our opinions. And I'm, they need to take the probably the top two – or three players in that list that they feel have one, the skill level to go out there and prove themselves and two, the leadership. And then they need to make sure that they sign these guys and they have them here next year. All right. Yeah. Aside from leadership, it sounds like they also have to make sure they have the drive because it was even Tim Burke was saying about in talking about how these players came to training camp. He said, some of them came complacent, you know, Thinking, oh, we got to the Great Cup last year. We're going to get the back there, and you know that that Great Cup hangover lasted for far too long, and that resulted in missing out on the playoffs. So, well, you know, he's also he he's an evaluator of talent, and he needs to make those decisions too. And he's been with these guys, and he should have an idea of which guys he believes will come to play um, with what he's expecting next year, and which ones aren't. I think he needs to if he has a list of three of them on that on there. Bring those three back, and then you replace them. And, and I would say you go out there and maybe even try and find a guy. I don't know how easy that is, try and find a guy, and then the rest will be rookies. I don't mind having some young guys on the team. You need you need young guys. You need some youth. What you do need, though, is you need some leadership. And, and as I say, I go back to those late 80s, early 90s teams, even the mid-80s teams. I mean, players changed, but there was one consistency. You had such leadership. And, and yeah, but, wait, but I want to I want to just what West had said about the leadership that he sees that he, we don't have today is not only did you have leadership from the top to the head coaches, but the players in the field did need the head coaches coaches to motivate them. These guys were leaders on the field and they, and they were accountable to themselves on the field. Not like yeah. So what I, you, I, no, listen, I think well, he's probably said it better than I could say it. So. I was just the other thing I was gonna say is you can't go back to those eighties. Those that, that was that was the heyday for the bombers. It's hard to get back to the, that spot now, especially with the way the NFL cherry picks 
the best CFL players. They weren't doing that as much in the 80s. But now, even look at a guy like Chris Matthews. You know, he could be a one and done or whatever. It's two, I guess. He'll probably end up back next year. Well, maybe oh, I can't. He might not even be back next year from what I hear. No, he has to be back next year, I think. But he could be gone. You know, they weren't cherry-picking guys that back in the 80s, so there was a little more consistency, continuity. I think, that, though, that the character of player they had, and, and that's the key, is finding the great mix of character and talent, because I think if you have some character leader, leaders on there, then they lead by example, and that and that becomes infectious, Right. And I I didn't see that this year. I I didn't see, and they even mentioned it again. Not that they're, as I said, they're. I mean, I consider them experts because you know. Um, but what I didn't see, and what I heard even from CBC, kind of echoing what I was thinking, there doesn't seem to be that on defense, that leadership. And and if you don't, so now you have the quarterback position, which is a leader in offense, and you need to find that guy, and you need consistency. Right, the play, the other offensive players feed off that consistency. On defense, it's the same thing. You need a couple guys, two or three, um, to take the helm, be the leaders, hold the rest accountable, and you have a different team. And, and you might not be the best talented team, but we've seen what happens with a lot of the best talented teams, right? So, so I say that's what they need to do, and it's very tough. I, I mean. The fan base next year is going to expect a 100% turnaround. I was going to say one thing about that though. They probably got a year's grace before before the um, they before they uh, lose fans because last next year the new stadium, I, I think they'll sell it every game. I, I yes and no. I, I, Regardless of how they play, they're going to sell them. It's just people. I, I don't know if that's game. as that's necessary. I I just I think there is. Um, Say what? <laughs> are, you, are, you trying to throw, are you trying to throw a curveball at me? Because it's worth All right. All right. Hit, the, hit the wrong button, sorry. Oh, well, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, I this is one of the toughest off-seasons facing management and the coaching staff. Um, I, I don't, I don't um, envy their position. The, the, um, there's no patience left in the fan base. I, 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 I believe that. There's just no patience. And the worst thing you want is you want a full stadium of people booing your team. Let, let, come on. So you, they might fill the stadium, but the people are going to let them know what they think if, they, if they're stinking, off, stinking up the field. This is, this is a knowledgeable fan base. This is a fan base that has witnessed far greater times. And this is a fan base... That wants to see more of those days. And we've, we've had a period of time in this city of garbage, total garbage on the field. And it's time that it ends. Well, here's the thing, and this is how I'm going to leave it. They cut the wrong people last year. Oh, yeah. they, they cut the lead, the wrong the guys who I think had that voice of reason in the locker room, that had the leadership ability. In, in the hopes of getting younger and better, but like you said, it's not always you're not always going to be better, and th- that's what they, they can't make the same mistake two years in a row. But our, our problem now is who are those leaders? Has anybody stepped up? Is Javon Johnson ready? Will Jonathan Hefty be back? Will those two be able to become leaders? Well, you know, I, I and I, that's where I think that the the evaluators have to come up with it because they know far better than us those those answers. But I'm gonna I'm gonna say something. Because I've had I've had time to think in the last couple of days, I I I, cal- I calmed down a little bit, and as much as I disagree with the decision being made, all right, I'm gonna put that I'm gonna put that beside me. Right, I'm just gonna I'm gonna put it beside. I'm gonna say, look, starting game one next year, I'm cleaning the slate and I'm giving I'm giving Joe Mack a chance, and I'm giving. He will be so happy to hear you giving him a chance. I'm giving I'm giving them all a chance, but I'm telling it's gonna be happy to know that you actually said his name. Yeah, well, I've been saying it more because it's an inevitability here. You know, we we've got what we've got. Butchko, the board of directors made the decision. I don't agree with the decision, but it is a decision, and we have to live with it. 
so we can live with it and hope for the best and hope that this year was a bad year and they rebound. And as a, hope this year was a bad year, it was a bad year. It was it was worse than bad. It was awful. Well, but I'm saying, as a bomber fan, I hope that that's behind us and next year is a different year. I'm willing. I'm willing to give these guys a shot, but I will tell you that if it comes game one, two, or three, and I'm noticing same, the same old, I'm going to be on it. So, so I'm not giving them a lot of rope, but I will say I'm giving them a chance to prove me wrong and to prove that that decision was the right decision to keep him there. Uh, and, and that's all I think we can do right now and hope for the best and hope that, as I said, the Bummers go 8-8 eight and eight next year. They got a shot at the playoffs, and I'm a lot happier with what we ended up this year. Well, if yeah, if they can improve, well, if they can make the playoffs, that'll be a start. But it's not even if they make if they can be competitive and well, eight and eight. I mean, uh, what am I saying here? Nine and nine. <laughs> I got my mouth. Oh, look, the Edmonton made it a seven and eleven. BC's. Uh, yeah, but you don't want to look at that. You know what? What happens? Know, Saskatchewan's eight. And what eight, happens eight, next eight. if you have a whole bunch of teams? That changed course, and now we have teams, teams that are winning records. The Bombers are going to have to compete with it. So the best thing they can do is say they're going to greatly improve and turn around their their year 100%. And they turn around the year 100%, you know, you're, you're looking at a much better squad on the field. And, that, and that's all you can do. I think if you do that, I'm much more willing to say, okay, now we're maybe a couple pieces away from a legitimate team that can make a run the following year. But they have to put certain things in place, and it's not an easy offseason. And that's why I'm giving Mac a, a chance here, because he's got a tougher offseason than he had last year, which he bungled. If he comes through this year and makes the right decisions, then I'm saying the board made the right decision, keeping it. Because this is an extremely hard offseason. It's, it's a stressful offseason. It, 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 he's making real tough choices, and this is going to – guide the team for the next year at least, if not two, on the by the decisions he makes. Well, that's all I have to say. No, you're right. They you know they put it in his hands. It's his show. And I think that they have to do that. Uh to start from scratch again would be ridiculous at this point. So you know they, they went out with a win. They closed the stadium down with a win, even though it was backups versus backups. Well, hey, look, I'm not holding my breath. I really hope it is. I ho- really hope we start next season and we have a new stadium. A- a- and does anybody know what the schedule shows for next season? You know, we are we starting right off in our own building? We're going to have some disaster like we had this year. <laughs> Let's hope there's still No, no, I mean, you, I, these are serious questions because I'm telling you, not that this is an excuse, but how many games was it? Was it five on the road or four on the road to start the season? It was four in a row, yeah. And that... you, you can't start the season four in a row. This is not hockey where you have 82 games if they're actually playing those games, right? You, you're talking about 18 games, and four of them are on the road to start the season. Well, and... you know what? The, the good news is it's going to be an exciting off season. We'll, we'll still be able to do these bomber reports, I think, because I mean, without the Jets around... I guess we'll be able to focus on the uh, getting well, back to our... We'll have the occasional one, I guess. You know, we're obviously not going to do them every week, but as the news comes and as we have some information, we'll definitely be back. So, you know, visit sportmentary.com, S-P-O-R-T-M-E-N-T-A-R-Y.com, and look at the top and look for the Bomber page because that's where we'll have our updates. You know, Kamish, it was awesome doing uh, our first year of... Uh, Bomber recap, bomber update, big blue recap with you. And uh, look forward that um, in the months to come we'll do some more of these. Um, thank you for joining me from Winnipeg week after week and uh, trying to keep me straight and narrow. It's not been a lot of fun, and, and I'm glad you uh, survived the season without any uh, coronaries. <laughs> well, last midweek was a really tough one. and uh, But anyway, you know, you you take care. Come gather the information, and um, we'll do some more recaps definitely during the year, um, leading up to next season. And you know, if, if our visitors to this show don't know, um, the commission joins me for the face off, which is another one of our specialty uh, shows. And if the Jets ever get on track this year, 
then we'll be doing some updates, a weekly update on the Jets. So we definitely got some more um, more uh, shows in us. Uh, but as far as a big blue recap, as far as the 2012 Blue Bomber season is concerned, this is a wrap. And have a good off season, everybody. <laughs>